So we have Pam Gregory joining us today, um, viewers, and she's coming on here to talk about a couple of her books that she's written and also to talk to you about um, her concepts of the soul and how the soul is an intrinsic part of, um, of our being and how we can use astrology and the natal chart to guide us through this earthly life and make the best of it really and kind of um, awaken us to our soul's purpose. And I've, I've followed Pam for many years <laughs> and I've got both of her books, um, one being the uh, Secret Language of the Universe, which is this one here. I don't know if you can see that if it's in the right direction. Oh, but, um, <laughs> and the other one being, um, you don't really believe in astrology, do you? Fascinating books. And I'd urge anyone that's on here interested in astrology or interested in life, in fact, really, um, and in your soul's purpose to take those books on board and read them cover to cover, which I have done. <laughs> and they are like my Bibles now. I go back to them regularly for little exercises and things as well. And um Pam's going to talk us through a little bit about what's in some of these books, especially the one which is the Secret Language of the Universe, which I've been rereading re again because we you you talk a lot about um, the natal chart in that specific one about the North Nodes, which um, anybody that's not really up to speed with astrology won't necessarily understand what that means. So perhaps you could just elaborate a little bit on that for us, Pam, and talk us through a little bit about what that is. Yeah, absolutely. And I wrote that really, how to co-create using the secret language of the universe, because in India and in Vedic astrology, the the know that what's known as the, the moon's nodal axis is the most important thing in the entire chart. It's the dominating feature of uh, of an in Indian an Indian birth chart. But certainly when I was learning astrology and really you know, for, for some decades, I'd say, after that, in Western astrology, there was very little spoken about the nodal axis. So I kind of became fascinated by it. And I have to say both those books came through me, I think, rather than from me. So I was very blessed in that. But I became really intrigued by, by the nodal axis. And what this is, it isn't a solid thing. It's actually, um, it's about the, the moon's um, orbit. It's about the moon's orbit, which goes like a sewing machine, clipping north and south of the ecliptic. Um, but it has it really operates at the soul level rather than the personality level. And the more I worked with it, um, I was then taking clients and looking at my own chart, too. And the more I worked with it, the, the birth chart moved from being circular to kind of like a compass needle. Mm -hmm. That if we're looking for our soul's purpose in life, the North Node really seemed to be what that was all about. And the rest of the chart became the cavalry. Yes. So it became kind of this pointy circle, almost like a teardrop, if you if you like. And I thought, wow, this is incredible. Because if we're looking for sole purpose, that is, if I had to narrow it down to one thing, that would be the one thing I would say. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of information then falls from the North Node. Which sign is it in at the, at the time of your birth? Which house is it in? What's the ruler? of that sign and you know what house is that and you know there's a whole series of cascading yeah. pieces of information which are incredibly incredibly rich so i just went off down a rabbit hole for, for quite some certainly weeks a few months and thought wow this is incredible and at the time i was writing it i was actually having my um inverse nodal return which means when the the transiting north node in the heavens comes to conjunct your natal south node and the south node is describes the gifts and the skills and the abilities that we've learned in a past life or past lives and that's what we bring in with us mm -hmm. but we, and, and that's a very kind of comfortable and familiar place to be because we've done it before in, in in past lives but where we absolutely have to go in this current life if we are going to feel satisfied at the soul level, is to head towards the north node, which is yeah. uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, which is uncomfortable because it's yeah. kind of territory and kind of you yeah. know. I want to yeah. fall back to my south node because that's comfy. I know how to do that, but we have to push ourselves to that north node in order to get the soul's growth that we are meant to have yeah. in this lifetime. But it acts like a kind of infinity symbol: north node, south node, kind of weaving back and forwards and. I have to say, in observing the nodal axis, when it's um, 
transited either by the, the transiting nodal um, axis in the sky in the heavens, or particularly some outer planet like like mm -hmm. Pluto, like Uranus, like Neptune. Yeah. And I did some teaching videos on this, which were supplementary to the book. People can start to have some profound mystical and past life experiences. And it's amazing how it really does tally up, isn't it? Like the astrology, it doesn't lie. And it really does show you what's going on. Like the things that are happening planetarily impact you. Because at the moment, I've got literally transiting Uranus is on my south node. And not long ago, a few months ago, I had the... Um, this, the same situation that you had when writing your book, I had the nodes were literally on my north and south node, but opposite. Yep, inverse. So nodes in Scorpio in the ninth house. So I was experiencing all of those. And I've also got Pluto on my ascendant at the moment. So li literally wow. coming over my ascendant. So <laughs> it was really triggering and squaring all of my major, you know, points, which, and obviously with everything that's been going on in the world, you know, it, it, I think a lot of us are experiencing these, you know, these hits, um in a big way you know and so it makes such sense what you're saying about how the astrology just you know doesn't line it really does guide us where we're going well that's a wonderful uh couple of transits to to launch this channel um because yeah. on the ascendant is is deep transformational life change you, you're you're stepping into your empowerment yeah uh, sometimes a couple of lumpy bits on the way through because yeah. it's linked to the myth of persephone and yeah. <laughs> that can taken down to hades and crossing the sticks styx and that's not tinkly really mm -hmm. but you then come up to the light and and the message is the purpose is empowerment and when you have transiting uranus on your south node you can often get some real downloads insights often galactic information linked to past lives that yeah. you are meant to weave into this infinity symbol of this life so i mean fabulous um and also uranus's social media and yeah, awakening exactly, and, you know yes yeah, and all of that about you know um being the voice and kind of using your voice and media like you say to kind of broadcast so it's really interesting that the astrology really doesn't lie in that in that aspect it's it's really telling the story of where we are so far and I know watching your channels like we all do like we were saying it's like the 10 o'clock news in our house we yeah. literally all sit around the, the tv <laughs> waiting for a new video to come on and we're all sitting there watching it in awe because like so many things that you talk about because you do a lot of global astrology but you also do a lot of predictive astrology don't you so you're kind of you know giving foresight and what's going to come and it's not like the normal things that you'd see maybe years ago, I'm showing my age here, like Mystic Meg when she'd write in the Sunday Times and, you know, Zodiac signs. Yeah, and Zodiac signs yeah. It's really intricate and really meaningful. And it, it has evidence to back it up, you know. So that in itself, I've found fascinating. And I'm sure, you know, you, you've probably been on a real journey yourself with your astrology, I'm sure. Like, I know mm. in the intro, we talk about you being you know sp your 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 knowledge spanning 45 years in in astrology and i know you've um, you've trained with Noel Teal isn't it as well yeah he was um, a genius i was yeah. so lucky i had to do my masters course with him really fast because he was yeah. in his early 80s then so wow. i didn't know how long he was going to last yeah. I had to do it in well i did it in 16 months so i did it really fast i mean so it, for some people they were taking years but i wasn't sure how long he was going to be with us and i'm really glad i i completed he was a, a technical genius an absolute technical genius I think sometimes that's what puts some people off of astrology though it is the technicality and the mathematical aspect of it because yeah. I know me and Beth look I'm I'm um, dyslexic I'm dyscalculi as well and and you suffer with ADHD don't yeah. you so I, I know that for a number of years I although I was really interested in astrology I was really scared to kind of start of learning it because I thought maths. I won't be able to do it because of all of the mathematical all the numbers stuff and, and the, the aspects and, and, and yeah but I think there's a way of feeling around astrology, isn't it? It's more the symbolism, and it's I'm noticing now, and you know, as, as a medium and a psychic myself, um, people that I speak to about astrology, they seem to be tapping more into the almost the feel of the planets rather than just working with the actual chart itself. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Kind of Start to read it like music, and so if you're, yeah. you know, if you're very psychic, you're sort of you're feeling, as you say, into the resonances, the frequencies of those different planets. And mm -hmm. I actually learnt my astrology you know, very much like a language. It had rules. It was, it was, it was, it was all about mathematics, calculation. We used to have to calculate charts manually with log yeah. tables of the planets. Wow, that <laughs> took forever. <laughs> we weren't allowed to use a calculator. Yeah 
in in the lessons and the exams. I mean, it was really grounding stuff. But I I've got quite a mathematical brain, quite an analytical brain. So mm. that was my route in. But if you're if you're very psychic and intuitive, you're reading the energy in a different way. And increasingly, that's where we're all headed anyway with greater yeah. psychic sensitivity. You, you know, the North Node can teach us so much, as I say. I when I had that inverse nodal return, I was writing the book, but also I had that extraordinary um experience down in southwest France with that Cafar lifetime. It was all tied up with a with a house that I'd bought yeah. there on the same field, literally the same piece of land um where I lived 800 years ago. Wow. And so wow. so many um past life experiences it was very mystical there were kind of shifts in dimension I mean it was it would make a great movie it would make a fantastic movie but it was the magic zone it was just the magic zone and I'm so grateful that all of that came through because it was so rich Mm -hmm. in in helping me grow and you know you you made the point about I've been astrology kind of stumbled into my life um, at a yoga class when I'd emigrated to Canada. You probably know that story, yeah. but I don't know what my life would have been without astrology. I don't know who I would have been. Um, it's taken me on such a journey. The people I've met, the experiences I've had, the the kind of framework it gives you energetically, psychically, but also it gives you a framework for your spiritual evolution. I don't know who, where, who, and where I'd be without it. I'm so grateful. It becomes like a religion almost, doesn't it? Like a belief system as well. It's like you believe in it so much because it because it is so so true and so right that we check it for everything, don't we? Yeah. When we were launching, when we were launching the business, right I was trying to figure the right time yeah. to launch it. I was thinking, oh, which one shall I do <laughs> <laughs> to get yeah, it in the right place? You know. The funny thing is, you you don't have to believe it, which is why I wrote the first book. You don't really believe in astrology, yeah. do you? Yeah. I was in the corporate world then and and I was doing well in the corporate world you know I'd be made a director at a very young age and so um my business colleagues and clients you know were thinking well she's obviously got half a brain you know she's doing quite well got half a brain but if it ever leaked out that I was an astrologer my goodness they'd take me off to a corner and say come on you know in a conspiratorial whisper you know yeah. you tell me you don't really believe in this stuff so that's why I wrote the book because there was such a grand canyon between my um growing reality of what I was seeing and their very narrow perception of it's just all about sun signs well if it's just all about sun signs it wouldn't have taken me exactly many lifetimes of learning and I'm still learning you know it, you it, said in one part that you there's over 3,000 ways of reading the chart or something isn't there a thousand of- variables yeah, yeah. So belief for me doesn't really come into it because it's a language you know it's like yeah. saying to people well do you believe in French yeah yeah it is what it is yeah. it is what it is it's a language so I, I know people think they have to believe in it but they absolutely don't it's just it's an energetic language which is mathematical and to do with sacred symbolism and that's how I see it and it, it, it's the language of the universe it's the language of God I think whatever you conceive God to be of divine intelligence yeah. and it can teach us so much because I'm, I really am trying to stretch my interest beyond what I call the bread and butter planets out to the dwarf planets the Kuiper belt objects yeah, that's a really interesting subject I'm fascinated by that what when you talk about the dwarf planets and the Kuiper belt objects and you talk about the mythology behind like for example Sedna and all these other planets it's just mind-blowing because a lot of the the actual um, mythology relates to the astrology as well which it, it is the astrology. Oh, it? People like, write to them and say, please don't talk about those, just talk about those. Well, it is the astrology. Exactly, <laughs> it is the astrology, yeah. It's the story behind it is what's unfolding. Yeah, it's expanding our consciousness. And I think it's leading us to a point of realising that our consciousness is infinite mm-hmm. and that the cosmos is fractal. It's like Russian dolls, it's fractal. Yeah. And it goes on and on and on and on. And, and, you know, I haven't mentioned this before, but in one of my previous lifetimes when I worked as an astrologer, and I won't mention my my name in those years, but I was the very first person, apparently, to, to write a paper, a scientific paper, yeah. proposing that the universe was infinite and fractal. Wow. And then, you know, there was certainly no calculator. That was back in the yeah. late 1500s, early 1600s. So um, 
I was on it then. Yeah. <laughs> I was on so that you're continuing it on in this lifetime. <laughs> it's just, it, it, I think my personal humble point of view is it takes several lifetimes. Yeah. I, I, you know, it's so vast and growing, of course. With 100%. The kind of and when you talk about the fractal aspect, I think that's the same with the soul, isn't it? The soul is very fractal in itself. It's multifaceted. So yeah. like you say, you know, past lives, you know, I believe a lot of the time when, when I'm channeling guides and things, a lot of the time, some of those guides are actually parts of my past lives mm-hmm. that are coming to tell me about where I need to improve or do or where I'm being guided to they're not a lot of people um, perceive guides as external to themselves but I actually believe they are intrinsic to your soul mm. you know the, the paradigm of your soul and uh, and that's a really interesting thing what you're saying there about the, the, the fractal aspect because I believe you know as within so without as above so below I think it always relative isn't it absolutely it's a you know, it's the, it's the it's it's really this whole hermetic principle of um the microcosm and the macrocosm because when i'm studying a birth chart i am studying a map of the cosmos but at the very same moment i'm studying a map of your psyche yeah it's one and the same inner and outer and you know in, in many um ancient scriptures and, and and ancient beings who are very wise say there is only you here Mm. So, you know and that's yeah. really weird because you can kind of poke your daughter and she feels very real and you poke the coffee table and that feels but but the some of the ancient wisdom says there is only us here and, and our whole reality is projected from our consciousness yeah exactly and that's that, that i would say in, in a nutshell kind of speaks of the thing where we say we're just a drop in the ocean the ocean being the collective consciousness and we're all just little tiny aspects of that but it feels like we're all separate doesn't it but we're not and that's where we need to be moving into now when we talk about the raising the collective consciousness and raising the vibration of humanity which you talk a lot about in your videos um you know and uh, that is why I really resonate with as well because that's what I want for sacred soul as well I want us to be able to educate people in all different areas and you have some fascinating guests on your on your um, broadcasts as well like Raider Austin who talks about water and consciousness which another fascinating subject and because I believe you know obviously as we are 99% water molecularly if they if they say I believe that the soul you know can move in and out of things in the same way that water and moves through like osmosis and diffusion so i and i so we're shapeshifters really aren't we as 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 souls if that makes sense maybe Absolutely. not physically if you if you like but from a subtle body perspective yeah. from an energetic point of view yeah. and you know and, and and i'm learning so much too i knew water was going to be a huge deal because of the astrology mm. but what i have learned personally through studying vedas work in more depth and and just in the last few days um last three days really mm. randy hatton's work um and they're both working with water in very different ways water is is like a spiritual teacher and we're in this constant feedback loop i've i've realized with water as a consciousness Mm -hmm. so the more that we as a single drop in the ocean as it were (laughs) um, can raise our consciousness we're raising the consciousness of the collective um, but also that there's this constant feedback loop of the water coming back to us at a higher frequency this constant feedback loop and I don't know if you heard on the Veda Austin interview what was fascinating she talked about the egg experiment yes which was fascinating that she'd taken, I mean, people can go and listen to it. She'd taken a... Yeah, um, listen to it, everybody. It's a fascinating <laughs> interview, honestly. Amazing. She'd taken a free range egg and um, she'd formed a water crystal from the kind of runny bit of, of the albumen. And it turned into this beautiful crystal with kind of feathers and very complex geometry. It was exquisite. But she'd also taken 12 kind of factory hen eggs mm-hmm and produced water crystals from those. And she'd done this many times, as I understand it, because she's very rigorous with scientific methods. She doesn't just do stuff once, she she does it repeatedly. And with the factory hen eggs, they had much less complex geometry in the water crystal. So then she thought, okay, so what will happen if I leave the the good egg, the, the, the free range egg in the middle surrounded by the factory eggs overnight and then take crystals from them. And everybody's saying, ah, oh, because they're 12, you know, 12 kind of low frequency eggs, they're, they're going to overcome the, the single free range egg. 
but the opposite happened. Mm -hmm. The free range egg. How amazing is that? But that just shows you, doesn't it, that goodness and that high yeah, vibration, vibration influences yeah. the negative vibration more profoundly. And this is a law of physics, and I so mm. often refer to this. The law of physics is that higher frequency energy will always overcome lower frequency. So that means, and that her experiment was so clear, and I think she did it yeah. repeatedly to say, you know, this isn't a fake, this isn't a anomaly. Um so it takes a much smaller number of us operating at a very high frequency to affect the whole collective. I mean, Bruce Lipton, Dr. Bruce Lipton talks about it only takes 1% of us to mm -hmm. affect the entire collective because, and Dr. David Hawkins and his beautiful, um, wonderful map of consciousness that many of you will be familiar with. He was also saying the same thing. It takes a yeah. tiny number of us operating at high frequency to actually cascade through the collective consciousness and raise the collective consciousness. So it, 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 you know, it could just be, we're dealing with numbers of thousands across the world to make that difference. If we can hold that yeah. frequency of love, joy, hope, compassion, hold it rock steady like lighthouses, we're gonna change the world. Yeah, and that's, that's phenomenal, isn't it? Just it's to think power, you have it? the power within yeah. you to make an effect change to such a degree because sometimes we do think don't we i know you yourself you think yeah. what what, what difference am i gonna make? make yeah just one person but clearly the yeah. one person that has that high vibration and is operating on that frequency of love and happiness and joy they do make the difference even though they're probably the people that sit back and think oh well just me speaking out is not going to do anything clearly it is because absolutely and veda made that point in the interview yeah. but if you just literally for free sit on your sofa at home and be in a state of love beam yeah. out love that is going to change the world yeah. and that's what's so exciting and um you know we're all aware there's some absolutely terrible 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 things happening in the world right now and it is very very easy as human beings very easy to go into a an automatic human reaction. Oh my God, you know, horror. We bring down into that negative space straight away, don't we? Uh, you lower the frequency of, you know, yeah. anger, outrage. Did you hear about X, Y, Z in that situation? You, instantly you've lowered your frequency. Or in so, fear, in, when you're in, when we're vibrating in fear as well, yeah. or worrying I'm, about yeah. the outcome of situations that are beyond our control. Again, we're dipping down into that lower frequency where we can't affect change in any way. But we can. But we can. Yeah. And so, you know, thinking about what's been happening, people say, well, what can we do? And obviously, if you're if you're close geographically, you might be able to be a practical help on the ground, which is fantastic. But 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 send love, send compassion, see those people radiating strength, see the land thriving in mm -hmm. terms of nature and, and and regenerating and regrowing that's what we have to do because if we're constantly in this reaction <laughs> it's another yeah. big scary thing yeah you know we're knocked off the perch so start as i've said sometimes in videos starve out the scary yeah. love in exactly. the good and then we stop being the observer don't we and that's yeah. the thing as soon as we were in that space we've been distracted from our purpose or we're, we're, we're out of that observation seat and we're yeah we're literally being driven around by somebody else's influence rather than what we're here to do. You know, we're being knocked off our perch, if you like. I know you, you say very much about being the eagle and looking from the eagle's perch. And I think that's, again, another analogy of what I'm saying about being at the, observa the observer, being in the observation seat. You know? Absolutely, 100%. You know, stay rock steady yeah. as the neutral observer, sending love, sending compassion, whatever you can do energetically, but stay rock steady as a lighthouse mm -hmm. because they're going to be more, you know, as you well know, we just chatted about it before yeah. we started recording. They're going to be many, many more things where it's going to be very easy. So, yeah, another yeah. big scary thing, but that is allowing external awful things to knock you off your perch yeah. in terms of frequency. And the frequency is everything. Everything cascades individually and collectively from our frequency. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going to create new earth. So you've got to be rock steady mm -hmm. uh, in holding that and not be diverted. And 
uh, and you know like everybody else I, I felt massive compassion massive heart opening for what's been happening yeah it's awful what, what's but been going on my you know my reaction has got to be love compassion seeing those people absolutely thriving seeing nature thriving i am not going to allow my frequency to drop because that isn't helping me and it isn't no, helping exactly. them and no help to others when you're in that space we're exactly. acting as a ball and chain yeah. on creating new earth. Yeah, because then we halt our progress and the progress of others. And that's yeah. why, you know, I know, you know, you've had Kathy McBean on your um, channel as well, who talks about um, the People's Health Alliance and the um, Food and Farming Alliance. And these are all communities that are kind of building now and building momentum, aren't they, for us to, as individuals, to become a part of and to see what we can offer to the collective, enabling us all to grow and to elevate our vibration and to find our soul's purposes and, you know, to just all be of service for our local communities in some way, shape or form, in, in however that is, whether it's doing what, what what you're doing with your channel or starting a, a podcast like we are, mm -hmm. what, whatever it is that can help, you know, raise the vibration be a be a lighthouse like you say for for people to to come to to find a, a place of tranquility and space for reflection you know we can all play our part in the raising of the vibration for humanity can't we that's very much 100 percent. because you can't stop broadcasting your frequency it's impossible there's no there's no boundary there's no gate you can put up so make it a good frequency yeah because you can either affect the collective negatively or positively Mm -hmm. in every moment so and yeah. it's no good just meditating for 10 or 20 minutes a day this mm -hmm. has got to be your 24 7 ongoing broadcast yeah 100 percent. and for people that aren't you know aware or of just starting to come into all of this awakening and realization of their you know their true essence and potential obviously you know from your experience where would you suggest that they start you know in because obviously for some people even meditating is a difficult thing yeah. which we're going to be we're doing a podcast we're, on yeah, that after your one yeah. about meditation is getting people started because for some people they don't find it easy they don't find it easy to switch off yeah and there's so much input isn't there social media you know yeah. twitter so much input our attention yeah. span has been developed if you like to be very short mm. um to take us away from it but but actually even not meditating just finding a place where you can either sit in your home um, or out in a, a park or a garden or up against a tree where you just can feel stillness. Mm -hmm. You can just feel stillness. You just shut your eyes, tune into your breath and, and perhaps see your, your breath as, as coming in and out through the heart. That will gradually slow and deepen your breath. You're actually changing your biomarkers your physiology in every moment you're lowering your cortisol you're boosting your immune system and this this is measurable in the blood you can yeah. actually do pre and post blood tests on this look at grandology.com or grandology.co.uk for this but particularly if you've got your feet on the grass your feet on the earth oh, yeah. and earth is amazing yeah mm. just it's the best antioxidant going way better than any vitamin supplements but that if you can get in contact their feet on the earth it acts to decompress your energy mm. and just feel stillness and try and sort of hear the bird song, maybe hear the silence beyond the bird song and just see if you can drop into kind of butter melting in the sun. Mm. And even that doesn't have to be any kind of meditation or anything. Even that is going to take you to a very different energetic place. Yeah. A hundred percent. And I think, what what I found, I don't know whether you found the same, Beth, you mm. probably did, but f with my work, so obviously I was doing a lot of readings at one point just before we kind of hit the, the storm of what we've been through over the last few years. Um, and, you know, I ended up coming away from everything because I just needed to unplug from everything yeah, yeah. For, for a while. I needed to find my, my roots. I needed to find my centre because I was getting swayed by some of this as well. And because you know, we're all we're all spiritual beings having a human experience, aren't we, at the end of the day? And ultimately, that is what we are. Um, and it's so easy to get pulled along the current, isn't it? Yeah. And I think what you're saying there is just, you know, to sometimes you need to just find your point of stillness again. Yeah, I found that with uh, social media and the, the whole online world. And like you said earlier about the attention span being decreased so much, I've come off all social media because I just found that it was I was really struggling to, you know, 
like take in certain amounts of information and be able to put a block on it when when I was going to bed it was just too much it was too much noise constantly yeah, yeah. Um, absolutely that noise too much yeah so turn the noise off find find periods of time I mean I have a lot of input coming in to me believe yeah, I can yeah. imagine I've got a lot imagine. Of, of stuff so in order to keep my energetic equilibrium I just have to take little breaks could just be five minutes here or there I'm lucky enough to have a garden weather permitting in the UK yeah. for, you know <laughs> you know biblical rain barefoot <laughs> on the grass just warmth and feel that decompression of your energy yeah. and you know I'll often just say I'm welcoming in an expanded consciousness of love I'm welcoming in an expanded consciousness of love and sometimes you can feel kind of buzzing in your crown yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, see I get that with the spirit communication as well it's a, but I think it's it, it not just with the spirit communication it is it is the universe connecting with you isn't it it's that you're yeah. connecting to or oh, if you said before about the quantum entanglement but you can quantum entangle with positivity as well yeah. as negativity 100 percent with love and vibration and you know it's such a difference like i noticed as well every morning now i go out in the garden bare feet straight on the grass to pick mint for my tea and just that couple of minutes going out into the garden whether it's raining shine whatever you go out you pick your mint and you you're grounding and you do feel such a difference because you can feel the energy coming in it's like you're rooting to the ground isn't it it's lovely it's just, it's uh, all, absolutely and and also i say to myself all the time, wow nature is thriving yeah, it's amazing yeah. what a miracle it is Oh, yeah. look at it isn't it abundant isn't it beautiful mm. and I try and spend moments you know staring into a rose or a, a lily and say wow look at the look at the patterns like Fibonacci and you know in the rose and really deepen your it's almost like beginner's mind that you're looking at nature for the very first time yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and really celebrating and being absorbed into a flower or a bird song or you know find and you start to become aware much more of the subtle realms of, of nature than when you do that as opposed to just rushing by and think oh to-do list you know what else have I got to do bomb 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 because I have a big to-do list every day <laughs> so <laughs> it's bringing it back I think if your focus is is external with all the noise there are a thousand problems out there a thousand at least maybe a million that we can't begin to solve as individuals but if we turn inwards if we drop into that single-minded focus of staring at the rose or you know the lily or whatever there's really only that to focus on mm. that internal point of stillness mm. and then it becomes really simple yeah and it's because mindful practice isn't it at the end of the day and, and going back to what you were saying about um nature what's really interesting when you when you speak of that and saying about getting kind of connected to the subtleties of the, the little subtleties when we first moved in this house I've, I've suffered with a lot of health issues over the years and um when we first moved into this house and we was doing a lot of barefoot walking and earthing in the ground it was almost as if like um there was like a connection between us and the ground and things started to grow yeah when it, when it was just like <laughs> that barren land and it was all just yeah. herbs that we needed for our every day themselves yeah. it was like a miracle it yeah. really was like a miracle and the more you notice it like you say the more they appear yeah it's like you're talking to plant spirit isn't it yeah lovely and you're back. david farrell was really interesting because he does the quantum um quantum plant um healing and that doesn't he i'd love yeah. to get him on here actually that he'd be really <laughs> interesting to talk to as well um because he does a lot of that um kind of information with the plant kingdom doesn't he and the astrological um correspondences and things like that yeah he's, he's so doing he's doing great work and literally he can hear the plants speaking to him yeah but that's what you had, you had, I had dream, that, yeah you? i've had the, quite a few recently since because i'm doing a herbalism diploma and since becoming more in touch with nature noticing more things like you say taking the time to actually look at, at the plants for what they are and appreciate their beauty and you know I've noticed things being said to me as I'm falling to sleep, random words popping into my head, like Latin names for plants that I've never heard of in my life that I then search and we've got them growing in the garden. I've never seen them before. And they, like, they serve a purpose for whatever you're going through at the moment. What, what we're going through at that time. So it is amazing mm -hmm. when you when you have that sort of predisposition to notice these things. And yeah, then magical, <laughs> you know, that's, that's they are magical beings. They are yeah. true. And I think the the animal world, the plant world, um, the trees are way uh, evolved beyond us. Hundred percent. 
so much to do. You know, we're the barbarians in this. Yeah, 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 we are. We are. When you think we're in mushrooms growing and all of their connectivity underneath the ground and how they can, and all the trees, how they can communicate through the forest. It's like, but we are capable of this. We just, we've forgotten, haven't we? Yeah. And that's another reason why I think it's so important to, to try to learn, even if it's the basics of astrology, to, I think, help you guide you into that space where you need to be going. Absolutely. And and uh, and with you, Faye, with that beautiful North Node in Scorpio in the ninth, I mean, that yeah. is fantastic for the work you're doing because it's extremely spiritual in its orientation, but yeah. the ninth house is about metaphysics. Yeah. And also broadcasting your metaphysical and spiritual knowledge. Well, here we are. Yeah, exactly. And that's and I'm at naught degrees. So I'm literally yeah. at the beginning of it. And my tenth house is in Sagittarius and I have Neptune right. in my tenth house as well. <laughs> so I Very think cool. So it's yeah. very much the spiritual, reaching yeah. out to the cosmos, reaching out, and, and there's a remembrance that's coming in more and more as we go through the coming months, and we're going to get more galactic information, more galactic yeah. contact. We are going to remember what we have been, yeah. and that's all going to come back to us as well, which I think is thrilling because there is so much information to come into us that is immensely exciting. Oh, yeah. I mean, Randy, Randy Patton is really using that energy already. Yeah. And that's the interesting thing, isn't it? To keep that in mind that rather than sitting on the vibration of fear and anxiety and worry, which is a struggle if you suffer with anxiety, like we both do, don't we? But I think it's learning to take that anxiety and transform it into excitement. Yeah. Into excitement and, and, you know, anticipation rather than fear, you know. Yeah, be part of the solution, not part of the problem. And, you know, I often say as well that we have been going as, as a civilization, as a humanity, round the hamster wheel of mm. war, death, poverty, misery for eons. Yeah. Hundreds, thousands of years. So when are we going to break that pattern? Exactly. We've got to up our game as humanity. We've got to up our game and get beyond that hamster wheel to envisage something way better than than how we've lived. And it's that, you know, what was the old Wayne Dyer thing? It isn't so much that, you know, I'll see it when I believe it, it's the other way around. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah the one I mean, you're talking about almost like fake it till you make it, you know, you yes. believe it and then it will happen. So you're the power, you're sitting in the manifestation seat, really, aren't you? That's what his philosophy We are is. powerful co-creators. So step yeah. into that new energetic hologram of absolutely who you are going to become mm-hmm. in this lifetime and your future self. See you as the highest version of self mm-hmm. and then start to live that way day to day. Feel the energy of that. You know, what are you? Are you a are you a dowser? Are you a teacher? Are yeah. you a herbalist? Or are you a homeopath? Are you a some kind of priestess, not in a teachery way, but in an inspirational way? What are you as your yeah. the highest version, best version of yourself? And just step into that, that future energetic hologram and live it right now. Right now. You don't have to wait 10 years down the road. Right now. Because time is shifting anyway. Yeah, and it's going so quick so fast I mean just this last few years I mean just going from like 20 even just 2017 to now I'm like it seems like it's two years ago doesn't it yeah (laughs) it's disappeared yeah because if if we're experiencing 3d if we are shifting in dimension we're experiencing 3d as dissolving Mm. we're also experiencing linear time is dissolving yeah and that's so interesting that, because of all the water that we've got going on as well isn't it and all yeah. of this information about water so we're very much connecting to water almost as a consciousness almost like it's another planet of such in some degree or another cosmos even you know well, it's, it's coming from you know a lot of it and i was yeah. talking to Bill about this at the beginning of the interview apparently some of our water some scientists say up to half of it but certainly some of our water is 4.5 billion, not million or, or billion years old, and wow. it's coming from the far galaxy. It's it's ice that is coming from the interstellar dust wow. way out in space. So imagine what new information it's yeah. bringing to the Earth when it when it arrives on Earth, and that it can communicate. Like, so I know when we used speaking to Vader Austin before, and she did the experiment about the eye when when she oh, asked the water amazing, the if it yeah. could see her, and then yeah. in the petri dish when she'd frozen the water, there was an eye in it. More than one eye. It was about three that eyes. That was my first introduction to her, wasn't it? Because you came yeah. down and you were like, "Oh my god, you've got to watch this. You've got to look at it." But that those three eyes almost felt like not just the 
the actual eye was relevant, but the, th- the fact there was three, it's like the third eye. It's almost like it was trying to tell us something. Yes, yes. I thought that like a third yeah. eye. I thought that too. It's so fascinating, it's, isn't it? It's, it's interesting. I haven't yet put this out on social media because I haven't worked out the, the, the technology of how to do this, but as a favour, um, she offered to do me a, a water crystal of wow. anything I want as a kind of thank you for the interview. So I, I won't give away the surprise, but I asked her to uh, do a crystal of a particular dwarf planet that I'm working with a lot. And she hadn't heard of that dwarf planet. So she had zero knowledge, uh, zero understanding of the mythology, the symbolism of that dwarf planet. So it was a really pure test. And the water crystal that came back I mean I just laughed out loud I just yeah. laughed out loud because it was so accurate yeah. and, and Veda had no idea she was just you know the the technician as it were yeah. you know enabling that to happen but water had read the consciousness and the meaning even though Veda didn't know so it's almost like a medium isn't it it's totally a, it's yeah. a medium channel it's a it channel yeah, yeah but for you know galactic consciousness or for, for, for information for us yeah. which Wow. It's just it's just beyond fascinating to me. That just oh, I think we're at the beginning. Honestly, with water, I think that we've just really been grateful if we you know if you spent time in India, you're grateful if you can turn yeah. on the tap and get fresh yeah. water. Um, I think this is an absolute pivot point right now. Those two interviews in particular mm-hmm. of, of of what we are at the beginning of so much richness and information that water is going to teach us, so much knowledge, ancient knowledge, galactic information. We're and just we take it so much for granted, don't we? We just think of, oh, we just grab it out the tap, you know, yeah. or grab a bottle of, of, of water. You know, you don't realise the, the power. But as, you know, as again... Going back to that, it's making you realise the power within yourself as well. Because if we're ninety nine percent water molecularly, then we we too have that yeah. ability. Yeah. And Veda has shown even if you take a bottle, you know, even if you take some tap water, which mm. chemically is not great, mm. and hold it to your heart as she has done, mm. it changes the structure of the crystal into into beautiful geometry as opposed to yeah. just disjointed stuff. Um, so it doesn't change the chemistry, but it changes the structure mm-hmm. just by holding it to her heart for 30 mm-hmm. seconds. I mean, and the, the power of love mm-hmm. in what we are about to ingest and makes yeah. up by molecular count, as you say, say 99% of us. Yeah. So what a change we can make in our consciousness just by doing that for 30 seconds. I mean, it's it's mind blowing. It, it is, and the future it's the future, isn't it? It's where we're where we're moving into. And for for those of uh, those of the listeners that are not really up to speed with astrology, we are moving gradually now into the age of Aquarius, aren't we? So we're kind of teetering on the edge of Pluto at the moment, which is all of the top down structures and all of the kind of control and authority. And we're moving into that space of. Um, Aquarian new age if you like and that humanitarian phase and f- from your perspective Pam you know obviously I know it's, it's going to be a bit of a bumpy ride to start with but where can you see that kind of going for us you know on the in the astrology over the next yeah few years? if I look back because I've done a lot of historical analysis of okay what happened last because because yeah. essentially astrology is a little bit like economics or meteorology yeah. you look at the cycles of planets and say okay what happened last time so Pluto's got a 246 to 248 year orbit so you've got to go quite a long way back and then back yeah. further and back further so I've looked at the historical cycles and always when there was this shift out of the end of Capricorn into the beginning of Aquarius, there was a challenge to the top-down structure. Now, historically, the top-down structure might have been the the abuse of power, the top-down structure with a lot of control, rules and regs, you could do this. It could have been the church. It could have been a very autocratic system of monarchy. Mm-hmm. It could be, you know, now it could be, let's say, governments, corporations, institutions, but it's a top down structure of verticality, which is elitist. Yeah. Rich, powerful people at the top, very poor people at the bottom. And always with that transition into Aquarius, there is a shift to people awakening. Mm -hmm. to realising they are not victims of the system, but they have power. So they move from being passive to being co-creators and taking their power back. Now, that doesn't come lickety split without you know no. without some challenge uh because the aquarius is also the sign of uh, rebellion revolution yeah. etc but it's shifting the power back to the individual mm-hmm. and away from big 
top down structures. Yeah. So increasingly, we are shifting from verticality socially and politically to a horizontal social structure. It's going to take a little bit, you know, some months and a few years, but increasingly we are going to be moving into collaboration, into communities, into sharing, into coming together. If you think of the glyph of Aquarius, it's like frequency. So we're, yeah. we're finding our soul tribes. We're finding our family of frequency. I've been with mine this morning, wonderful group of people who are creating, okay, what can we do to create a better world? Can we buy land? Can we grow food? People are doing this all over the world already. Yeah. And that people are much less interested in their their stock market portfolio of investing for profit. They say, okay, yeah. well, what can I buy the, the land for the group or contribute to that? Yeah. What can I do? That's can I buy sense. premises yeah. for, for a people's health alliance? That's going to be my legacy. What can I do to contribute? People yeah. absolutely want to do that. They couldn't care less about because I think we're going to go through some major financial transitions. Yeah. So it's pointless, you know. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Things Let's become irrelevant, things. don't they? Yeah. It's more about love and compassion yeah. and sharing and helping each other, because yeah. that's where I'm, you know, that's where I've seen the seat of, you know, expansion unfold for me with, with, with the work that I do. I mean, I've seen a lot of people, you know, going on and, and doing their mediumship and, you know, making fortunes and money from all different things, you know, and making all different courses and that. But in the same breath, it's not just about making money, is it? Mm -hmm. You know, why can't people access some of this for free you know and and because ultimately if we would really do want to raise the vibration of humanity not everyone can afford to do these courses i mean i know over my lifetime of study which spans about 30 years of different various different things it's cost me thousands of pounds in, in study but not everybody's coming from that perspective where they can afford to do that and that's why we've created sacred soul because we wanted to be able to offer people some education through discussions with you know interested individuals like yourself pam but also offer them some um education and some yeah. you know downloadables and pdfs that they can kind of access some of this information for free so that they can help that can help them with raising their vibration because what's the point of leaving people behind that ultimately that one person that can't access that information could be that deciding factor of that one extra point of lifting us up that vibrational frequency 100 percent, and that's why i've sort of i've tried to construct a business model where all the information on my YouTube channel is free, obviously, yeah. for all the viewers. I write a long um, sort of six to 7,000 word newsletter every month. That's free. Yeah. Completely free. The only thing I charge for is my training courses because they took a lot of time yeah. to film and produce. But your tutorials are really reasonably priced as well, Pam. They're not, they're not really. achievable for people. to. No, achieve. I mean, some of them are eight pounds, ten yeah, pounds, they're, they're really pounds. Reasonable. You know, yeah. and, and there are hours of teaching in there. Yeah, and I, they're very, very insightful. And I, I've done a few of those ones myself as well. And I'm doing, a, I'm, me and my auntie at the moment, we sit down and we go through different ones because I'm helping her to learn a bit of astrology as well. And your videos are, are fantastic for that because they're a real visual as well as, you know, yeah. the, the kind of understanding of it and the underpinning of it. It's yeah. the visual packed stuff. with information because yeah. I want people to go on their own astrological journey because yeah. that's a journey of empowerment. So yeah. I want people to do that. So I'm not interested in making a load of money from it. I want to make them accessible. Exactly. I've got a, I've got certain costs with the website yeah. I have to use. Course, so we've all got to earn a living, haven't we? Because at the moment we still have one foot in that 3D reality, don't we? We have to earn a living because we've got to try and keep roofs over our heads and food in our, on our table. And, you know, and we're no, of no use to anybody else if we go down the drain pipe, you know. So yeah. there is that element of finding, it's finding that balance, isn't it? It's, it's, it's kind of, you know, moving away from being completely money oriented and being a little bit more balanced with that and sharing. It's shifting. It's shifting so fast, Faye. Yeah. It, I, I'm seeing it with my own eyes, with the groups. You mm. know, if one person is struggling in a group, somebody else will lend them money. Somebody else will give them food. We want to come together because we realize we are all one humanity. Yeah. Ultimately, we are one consciousness, actually. And some of the, the, I know this seems like a radical thing to say, but some of the terrible things that are happening in the world, you know, if it is true to say that our individual individual reality is a reflection of our individual consciousness then logically it must be true to say that our collective reality is a reflection of our collective um, consciousness exactly yeah and so as long as we are in in fear anger judgment we are going to see those awful things playing out in the world you know, <laughs> another big scary thing so we've got to get a grip we've got yeah. to get a grip as individuals to change the collective consciousness to yeah. stop those things happening because it's no good saying well they're the bad guys and we're the good guys. 
no, it's actually exactly. coming from the collective as, as one unique you know one unity consciousness 100 percent. and i think that you know on that note talking of what we've spoken about with the north node you know when, when we're looking at the, the birth chart it's an integral part of the whole birth chart isn't it just like what we're saying about you know our, our influence affects everybody and it's affecting the collective mm-hmm. and that is part of our soul's purpose so whatever like you say ch- um, planet and and house our north node is in we still also have the collective responsibility to be heading in that same direction for the greater good of everybody and so that is all part of our soul's purpose also you know there's 100 percent well and you know i in a recent video i i I shared a quote from martha graham who was apparently an amazing dancer and choreographer and it was a beautiful quote which i can't remember word for word but essentially she was saying everyone has a unique essence everyone has a unique purpose and if you don't step up to shine your light the world will not have it the world there'll be a missing piece of the puzzle if you don't do what you are here to do as an individual and you don't have to be loud and extrovert and shouty you can do it in incredibly quiet ways meditating at home on your sofa but that's your unique essence that the world needs you were incarnated if you take away the meat suit for that unique essence to play out in the world right now yeah I 100% resonate with that and that gave me goosebumps when you said that 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 time on your on your channel I was like wow that really resonated with me because when you talk about the the birth chart being like um the hymn sheet from which we play the melody of our soul it, 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 without our individual soul vibrations we'd never be able to play a song of any description would yeah. we because there would be no other music to put with it and so we're, we're all part of the orchestra aren't we really when you look at 100%. it from that symbolic perspective and yep. you know, if we're all going to want a lovely frequency to, to emanate from, we're going to all have to put our little part in. Yeah, to create that harmony. You know, somebody yeah. somebody's sort of banging the drum, somebody else on the yeah. triangle, somebody else on the <laughs> whatever, but we form, absolutely, we, find, we form a divine orchestra yeah. um, to move the evolution of humanity forwards. We are in a very unique evolutionary opportunity now, mm. and that's why things are going so far. We've got to grab it. We've got to grab all of it because yeah. we've never ascended in physicality and that's why there's no dress rehearsal and it's kind yeah. of you know we're white water rafting as we yeah, go completely new isn't it it's like we've never experienced this before as a as an evolution if you like it's you know it's, it's completely new so and that is that you know rather than being frightened of it i think we should look at it and think wow this is exciting where's this going to take us where are we going to go what are we going to be doing yeah you know collectively. Yeah, Absolutely. So if you can create that feeling of excitement rather than terror, mm. that's a very different frequency to start yeah. to create from. You know, yeah. okay, what can I do? How can I be part of the solution? Can I link up with other people either online or physically, find a group? And if you haven't found a group, just really set a clear intention. I am present tense already easily finding my family of frequency. Mm. And then they just become magnetized to you and off you go. Yeah. Wow. It's fascinating. Yeah. Oh, it's been a pleasure to talk it's to you. So nice to be honest with you, I could talk to you for hours. There's so <laughs> many other things I wanted to ask you about, twin flames and soulmates, but we kind of have ended up going on to other things that I think were more important for perhaps our listeners to to hear about, yeah. which is, you know, the, you know, the divine the essence it's yeah, in, of our it? consciousness yeah. and our soul and our soul purpose. And so anybody that would that would like to um, know more about their soul's purpose, then obviously do purchase one of Sam, um, Pam's books or go on to her uh, website, which is, it's the next steps at Pam yeah. Um, yeah, it's either the next step.uk.com or the yeah. shorthand is Pam Gregory.com. Pam Gregory. Yeah gregory.com and, and everything is there it's, and there's a lot of tutorials there for you to learn the basics from the beginner really and and it is really you know insightful and easy to follow and it will just give you a, even if you just only go on it to get that north node aspect done so that you can kind of see where you're going if yes, you can download a birth yeah. chart can't you as yeah well, from, you the can birth chart chart. from the website very yeah. easy just enter your birth yeah. data and off you go at the beginning of your astrological journey which will last many lifetimes oh god yeah thank you from me <laughs> and me because i'm still learning now and you know <laughs> i don't think you ever stop learning about astrology do you it's, it, it's so much to learn you you know you've not just got the predictive astrology and the global astrology but you've got your unique astrology you've got health astrology there's just so much isn't it's there a lifetime it's, it's vast i mean there's so many i think um, they should teach it in schools in all honesty I, they used to years ago didn't they 
you know absolutely I mean it was part of the mystery schools yeah it was part of university you couldn't be a doctor without understanding yeah, I remember but, yeah but you're I, the, think, I think that should be integral to education systems and I mean obviously some of the education systems that exist at the moment maybe that won't be the case but some of the new for forming education systems that will all happen which I believe is coming not too far in the distant future we will hopefully be teaching people about astrology and herbalism and the things that we really need as human beings I'll definitely be you know children about that, yeah, yeah as you and new, and generation, new generation of parenting and I think it's integral to your life as a mind body and soul spirit yeah. person isn't it it's not absolutely and that's how it used to be you know we're yeah. going back to those time mystery schools etc and we're also going back to I think Lemurian times in a big way and that was one of the most perfect civilizations that we're, we're aware of where um, nature was seen as, as one whole and we were part of that one harmonious whole everything was in right relationship right balance with huge respect for all living beings you know slu mm. sl slug snails yeah. mosses the whole lot because everything was in balance and in harmony and we are going back to that kind of magic we we don't even have to learn it we just have to remember it yeah. and that's what's going to come through and I think like you said before we're in that um that space now where we're going to be in the age of Aquarius probably for the next 20 odd years won't we and then we'll move into the into the Pisces era which would be God consciousness wouldn't it, it would be if you want to call it God but it would be really stepping into that we'll be fully in, engrossed in that then in that love yeah, vibration that, well that's 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 the, the planetary so I've actually never ever ever talked about moving into the age of Aquarius because mm. that's a huge age shift of yeah. Over, well over 2,000 years for each age. Yeah. Um, but what is important is more Aquarius energy through yeah. the planetary cycles. So Pluto next year will start to move into Aquarius and then yeah. it will stay there till 2044. And yep, then it'll be moving into Pisces. So yeah. that's where the very strong Aquarius... Generational energy. shifts more so, that is, isn't it? Yeah. That yeah. is going to be so interesting because that's just going to show where we are going generationally and hopefully the new generations as they come in will be more of that else. oh so gifted yeah so gifted yeah, way i think way ahead of where we are sadly yeah. and hopefully the technologies will support that because obviously aquarius is going to be very technological as well and ai infused so hopefully that will bring us into that space where we do you know we still have that connection you know, to everything that's intrinsic and important to us as human beings, you know. Yeah, one hundred percent. And and they're gonna be some well already are amazing health technologies coming in to help yeah. us. Which is fascinating. Pam, I can't thank you enough for thank coming on so and much. talking to us. You've been so charitable as well to come on as one of the first guests because you don't really know much about Sacred Soul yet. So to come on and give your, your time for free and to give your wisdom and share your wisdom and knowledge with everybody, we can't thank you enough. We're so grateful. And no, it's been a joy. Well. Love the conversation, actually. Yeah, it's, and, yeah, and maybe about... later at another time, if you're not a busy lady, which you probably will be, you might <laughs> be able to come on again to talk about a different subject, but we'll see how that goes. But thank yeah. you so much, Pam. It's been, a, been our it's pleasure. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's been fun. really wonderful. Thank you so much, and, and have a wonderful rest of day. And it's it, it isn't good. raining in the UK today, so that's another no, job. Sounds out. <laughs> Thank you, Pam, and God bless. And take, um, care. take care. See you later. Lots of love to everyone. You too. Bye for now. Bye bye, Pam.